Hey everybody, welcome back to How to Tie with your guide, Big Mess, from the one, the only, Tucker CG Fly Shop. Just want to thank everybody for all your patience this year. I know I haven't had a whole lot of videos out for you folks, uh, whether it's fly tying or streamside reports. It's been an interesting 2021. I have to tell you folks that a couple of things have happened. Uh, number one, I had a little bit of surgery, which has been fantastic. I feel much better. Uh, number two is I'm kind of in a midst of moving, uh, our family of moving to, a, to a, a new house. And I had to get all my fly tying stuff over here reconfigured because uh, I had just redone everything. So I had to make that fit in a little bit smaller area, but I gotta tell you, it's working out real nice for me. And also there at the shop, we've had some growth. We are now have our third location, which opened up here recently, and that's in Waynesville, North Carolina. And that location is 110 Depot Street, Waynesville, North Carolina, area code 28786. So what I'm gonna tie for you folks here this evening is I'm going to tie a ant that I like to fish here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and beyond. The hook that I'm using for you folks here is a TMC 100. It is a size 12. I fish these in 12s and 14s. Occasionally, I will go down to a 16, but not that often because the profile of the body that we're gonna tie on this hook is gonna be relatively small anyway. So I don't think that it's necessary to go that small. And the other thing is, you know, ants can be a little big. They don't have to be super teeny, any tiny. And I wanna be able to see this fly. I fished this fly not only on the edges uh, of the creeks and streams, but I fished him throughout the current seams where you typically would drift a regular dry fly. Remember there's flying ants or other ants. If they get dislodged, and they're going to be going with the current in those particular locales. So you kind of have to have a fly to see, or at least I can. You may have some of that Superman X-ray vision and don't need it, but for me, I do. So the thread I'm going to be using is some black thread, and I'm going to get this started here momentarily. And I am actually using a Legacy C Norvice with the stainless steel Magnum hubs, and it's in Liberty Blue. I really like the blue for sure. I'm a huge Cowboys fan, but being that we're in Carolina, this is probably closer to a Carolina Panthers blue. And with the black base that I have, it's awesome. It's stinking awesome. So I wanna take some super fine black dubbing and I'm going to spin this up here on my Norvice and I'm just gonna take this. That may be a little bit too much. We can always add to it. So I wanna rotate that spin the vise toward me right there let that dubbing catch onto that thread and this is going to make a super durable body and what i am going to do here with this is i'm actually going to build up a ball to represent the the ant itself you can do this with red in the back you can do it with black in the back like i'm doing here but all you're doing is basically building up this little ball um, and that's all we want to do just to kind of fine tune this in i will spend a little bit of dubbing on the traditional way which you can do and i'm going to rotate my norvice this particular position so i can see that bottom because i'm really concerned more so about what that bottom looks like than what the top does because that's the part that the fish really looks at let's let's just face the facts the top is made for us our eyes and the fly bins but the bottom of the fly is made for the fish that's what matters most, right? Is what do they see? That's what their perception is of the particular fly. And if they're deciding, hey, ooh, crunchy, munchy, let's go get that bad boy. Good protein, okay? So I'm pretty cool with that. It does not have to be exact. It's not rocket scientist, science, rather. Let's keep it pretty simple. The next color I'm going to use is a pretty cool color. It actually is a red brown combo it is semperfly and we are in the process of adding semperfly to the shop so you look out for that coming to the shop here pretty quickly uh, hopefully get that order done here pretty soon and we'll have the semperfly semper semperfly fly tying products for you folks there so here i took the liberty of doing it the traditional way so if you're out there and you don't have a norvice you, you can kind of see that it can be done either way 
However, man, it's hard to beat that rotating feature. And the great thing about that is it's called fatigue. You really minimize your fatigue. So if you tie in a lot of flies, it's less movement on your shoulders and those things like that because all I'm doing right here is just taking my fingers and I am rotating that vise. Then I have the ability with the tension knob over here to be able to dial in how much tension I can fine tune where it is position wise uh, in the rotation movement. I've got those lock positions and I can do whatever I need to with it. So I'm gonna put in a half inch. I wanna lay a little bit of a thread base right here and I'm gonna bring my thread back to this particular point. The next material that we're gonna use here is going to be some polypropylene yarn. It can be parapost, it can be bonnie cord. You can use what you want. I typically use white. And what we're gonna do here is I've got a clump. I'm just gonna lie it, I say parallel to the hook. I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise. I'm going to get some nice capturing wraps right there, like so. And I'm gonna make a few traditional wraps forward, creating an area for some hackle to go. I wanna lift up the post. I wanna pull it back, lock it in position like so. Lock it, lock it, whammo, half itch. Secure our work in case we have a problem, um, which I do sometimes, just so you folks know. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna come in and basically just trim this off here at an angle. It's not representing anything. It's just really something for me to see more than anything else, okay? Um, if you notice that the acoustics are a little bit different here, we've got hardwood floors and tiles and stuff in here and this ceiling is not quite as high and the room is not quite as big. So I'm sure the sound is a little bit different. And as I get in here to kind of post editing, I'll see what it looks like, sounds like. But great want to thank you folks for your patience with me. Definitely guys at the shop, they've been super supportive um, this year. And we are super excited to have you folks watching our videos. So I wanna secure my thread over to the bobbin holder. And I'm gonna take my two grizzly hackles and all we're doing is kind of representing some legs in here. And I'm just gonna make some wraps, make as many wraps as you want. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna lift this bad boy up, pull it back. I'm going to bring my thread over off of the bottom, bob, boom, not bottom, bobbin holder, cradle, whatever you wanna call it, thread post capture it like so just kind of wrap back I'm going to take I will take my half inch tool and I'm going to take and push those hackle fibers out of the way one two and I'm going to do a third okay still got plenty of room at the eye hook I'm not crowding it it's big I don't really give a hootie tootie it just works whammo whammo lemma ding dong that's all there is to it now I'm just going to push those back some of you folks will take some of your these here, you can use these, you can cut them and use those to push your hackle out of the way. Those work well also. I'm gonna do a couple of whip finishes on here and we will be in excellent shape. As far as the materials on this fly, just look at those down in the description below. Super simple, tie them in black, black, red, whatever colors you want to, cinnamon, uh, based upon the terrestrials you have in your area. I think that's the most important thing. So I'm gonna take down and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just gonna trim this. If you want it long, trim it long. If you want it short, trim it short. That just really kind of helps as far as a visual aid out there. The other thing, if you wanna trim this down here, feel free to do so as well. Typically, I leave it until I'm on the water and see how they react. If they want a little bit lower ride and fly, feel free to come in here and trim it down. It's not gonna hurt it at all. It's, you have the ability to adjust it when you're on the water. And I feel like that is an area that a lot of fly uh, fishermen lack in doing is when you're on the water, having a pair of scissor forcep combinations to be able to make an adjustment. Uh, maybe you have a great uh, stone fly pattern that's a dry fly, however, they're eating them below the water. You know, take that dry, you know, trim it out, make it look gnarly, but it's still a stone fly and it rides under the water. That's okay. It's okay to modify the flies. That is your prerogative, but it also could, it could be the difference between catching, you know, two fish or you know, maybe hooking up in 15 or 20. 
just understand these things are meant to be modified. And if you're a tire, which you probably are by watching, you have the ability to get super creative with your fly patterns. So if you folks have any questions, feel free to hit me up at shannon at tuckflyshop.com. Remember, we're located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina, 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina, and our new location, 110 Depot Street in Waynesville, North Carolina. Thank you folks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you folks on the next fly tying video. Y'all take care. Peace out. We'll catch you on the next one. Tight lines, everybody.